Let's bring in Diana Avigdor, Portfolio Manager and Head of Trading at Barometer Capital for more on what's happening today on the markets. Uh, Diana, thanks so much for making time. Thanks for having me. I want to start with NVIDIA because it has really been all eyes on NVIDIA today, watching it, you know, brush uh, with this uh, $1 trillion market cap. You own NVIDIA, you have for a while. What do you make of the run up that we've seen in the stock price so far this year, up 175% at this point? We're very happy. This is a very high class problem to have that it's become uh, your number one holding in the portfolio because it has rallied so much. Uh, and so the weight has gone up. Um, they had their biggest guidance uh, for second quarter of 23 um, that they've ever given. They've uh, guided to $11 billion in revenues for Q2. Seven was expected. And they attributed it to demand for their chip, that um, a data center chip that gets used in the development of artificial intelligence. And the premise that we had originally for buying NVIDIA was that, you know, this is a, a new development. This is a growth uh, factor in the market, uh, in businesses, um, this artificial intelligence and chat GPT. And so if you don't know who's going to win the war, you just invest in the, uh, in the arms dealer. And this was the arms dealer. Are there others that you have your eye on right now in order to, you know, go with that sort of same strategy? So it's an interesting question because, you know, obviously the stock is up 175 percent and it is expensive. It's 127 times earnings and it's trading at 37 times sales. So, of course, we're thinking about, you know, is this uh, at risk? Is this, is this mm -hmm. a position at risk? But we usually let our winners run. And so you don't get the top. Um, you get something off the top when it starts moving down. Um, that's when you sort of stop yourself out. Otherwise, you miss the upside. But your question regarding the the um, the, the the environment. Mm -hmm. So AMD also um, uh, has uh, GPUs, and so we're kind of watching in the context of what we do with Nvidia, and we're keeping the Nvidia right now. But we're watching for things like. You know, there's a lot of data points. There is data center numbers. There is um, there is a lot of read throughs from com uh, from customers over over any given short period of time. So we have a pretty good pulse uh, on what's going on. And plus, management is very uh, a great communicator with the street. So they don't want to blow up their shareholding base. But if we start seeing things like AMD putting up compelling products, or if we see uh, you know, AMD winning contracts and stuff like that. So you, you have you have an investment, but you have to keep an eye on the environment as well. The other big focus that we uh, talked about off the top there, uh, Diana, the U.S. debt ceiling. So it seems like there is a deal uh, that uh, just needs to be approved at this point, though just it still might be a quite challenging few days ahead uh, for policymakers there. Um, however, what sort of reaction uh, do you think we could see on the markets from this point or do you think, you know, most of the divide uh, in the U.S. has been priced in? Yeah, that, that, that is exactly the question you and I have discussed in previous hits, mm -hmm. that the market is a forward-looking pricing mechanism. And certainly in the, you know, I'm a trader and one of the one of our one of our sentences, our market's going to do what hurts most people most, and right now is just rallying um, a short num a small number of stocks at the expense of other stocks. I mean, you know, 260 names in the S and P are negative year to date. So the rallies have been on the very narrow breadth. Uh, you know, on eight, in eight names, uh, the spread between the S and P and the Russell, the Nasdaq and the Russell, it's a smaller cap. Um, is 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 historic, really, and 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 the equal weight uh, indices. So it's really been powered by a a handful of few. So what has the market has priced in through these few names? Um, the debt ceiling is is important. We've seen what happens when it doesn't pass in 2011. We don't want to be there. Um, either way, um, market right now is I think telling us that it will pass. There is. It hasn't sold off. It's 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 held up, albeit with a very handful number of stocks. So it's possible that um, in this narrow breadth environment, when the debt ceiling passes, um, the other stocks can start participating and have breadth kind of widen out and and catch up to the ones that have rallied. So um, bottom line answer is that. 
debt ceiling passes, I think, after a few days of volatility, because the Treasury does have to issue a trillion dollars worth of bonds once it passes. So after a few days of volatility, I think overall, when you look past that, uh, the market should like it. And speaking of some of the, the weaker points out there right now, uh, Diana, energy is one of them. We were just looking at the price of oil tumbling today, falling below $70. Uh, what do you make of that uh, weakness that we're seeing? Yeah, so it, it, it's, a, it, it's a head scratcher why it hasn't done better, given that the economy has not fallen apart over the last month or two. I mean, everybody's talking about recession. It's the most telegraphed environment uh, ever. Uh, the question only remains in people's minds as to how long and, and how deep. And so we keep gravitating in that, in that, in that space, how long and how deep. Um, we've had some economic numbers out of Canada uh, the last couple of weeks. We've had a higher than expected CPI, which was not a great surprise. Mm -hmm. And we had um, um, house, uh, housing uh, starts at up 11%, which was also much higher than expected. Yet at the same time, we had a lower GDP number. So, um, you know, we want the opposite. We want consumption numbers, uh, pricing numbers like CPI to come down and consumption numbers to to be in line at least like GDP. So kind of went the wrong way. And that puts Bank of Canada back on the table to raise rates next time they meet. What that means, and yields have come up in the last month. In Canada, they've gone up from 282 to 325 hmm. on a 10-year bond, just to give you a, a flavor of how much. So quite a lot, and that's what's holding the loonie up. But, you know, it's not a great combination to see a weaker GDP with a central bank that is still going to raise rates in what has been the fastest rate hike regimen in, in our memory. So that gives rise to that narrative, which brings me back to the beginning mm -hmm. thing, is that recession, yes, but how long and how deep? So we're moving towards the longer and deeper as opposed to shorter and shallower anytime we see this combination of number. And so from a demand perspective, you have energy going down globally um, because there's just enough supply. Um, and perhaps uh, uh, perhaps recession is coming um, um, deeper than, than we would like to see. But that is not my base case. Mm. There is still a lot of stuff to see. Economic data has been coming in like this. I think central banks are probably more done than not for now. And uh, well, economies have not fallen apart. Earnings season has not been horrific. So as long as earnings are coming in and consumers are spending in the form of retail sales, for mm -hmm. example, uh, you know, you don't short the market in the face of consumption.